together like this. Spread joy and peace, no need to pout. When we join together like this, it shows what love is all about. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Framing examples of Islamic extremism right here in this country. There's actually a place there called Islamburg. They have a sign that says, Welcome to Islamburg. It's about a 60, 70 acre large compound. I'll never forget that phone call. They informed me that there was a plot. We're going to be carrying an M4, 500 rounds of ammunition, and a machete. And if it gets down to the machete, we will cut them to shreds. And the media will never allow us as African-American Muslims to be presented as victims, even when we are. Should Americans be concerned or is this under control? <laughs> it can't be under control just through monitoring them. We're all defined by what we do. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. My name is Shakri Abdul Rashid and I'm 14 years old. My name is Mohammed Salim. I'm 13. My name is Sabuhi. I am seven years old. My favorite part of live, about living in, in Islamburg is I get to be around a lot of my friends and family. It's very beautiful, the greenery. It's very peaceful. I love it because it's special to me. It means something. It's a part of me, wherever I go. So if everybody can move to the side, sit down. Sit, so, like, so, on the side, seat. on the side seats, right over there. The this guests? is for the guests. The guests oh, going got the, the middle. Oh, the guests got the middle, yes. So. But what we're doing today, what we're doing as a community, a global community, standing up against the hate, I believe, personally, is going to change the tide of Islamophobia in this country. If 2015 was bad, I believe that 2016 is the turning point. Thank you very, very much. Enjoy the rest of the program. And hopefully the sun will stay out to keep us a little warm until we're on there. The conditions in Brooklyn were pretty tough. There was uh, violence in New York City, lots of violence. Uh, it was emerging, but we had a small little niche in East New York where there was uh, dozens of Muslim families and that provided some insulation. And so what the community did was something that was unheard of, which is they invested in property in the Catskills. And of course, you hear about people buying property in the Catskills. Now, that's a sign of wealth. This was a matter of survival. There's people of the media who've registered, that's what I'm saying, registered and told us, you know, and communicated with me. If you haven't registered, if I don't know you, how can I allow you to take footage from here? You understand? The danger that we are put in right. well, no. by, by irresponsible journalism, right. irresponsible members of media. You see a lot of smiling faces here, right. but those lives are very precious to me. You understand? <laughs>
We're seeing thousands of inmates convert to Islam while they're in prison every year. And many of them, when they leave, go to religious communities like Islamburg. You know, we've been telling you all about France's no-go zones, hundreds of Muslim-controlled areas around Paris that outsiders and cops don't dare to explore. They chose just to give it up. We have them here in the United States, too. I bet you did not know that. These are truly no-go zones. Unlike the ones in Europe, which I have visited, you can actually walk into those no-go zones. You can walk in with your cameras. You can talk to people. But in these particular no-go zones, you cannot get into. We have a bakery, a boutique. boutique. We have a gift shop. Here's our masjid. It's called Beitullah. You have a gift shop. Uh -huh. Your community doesn't want to allow visitors. Oh, we get people from all over. We have, you know, communities come over. I know that. Yeah. But I'm just saying the gift shop gives oh, the guy, that rumor. That's, that's true. <laughs> I know you never, never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a gift shop if you don't want to allow visitors. examples of Islamic extremism right here in this country. Thousands of radical Islamists and so-called Islamic villages have been set up across the country. The way Fox coverage of Islamburg has worked from the start is uh, there'll be some, some event involving Muslims and violence. Sometimes it will be a real event, sometimes it will be an alleged event. It will be enough to make the news. A day or two afterwards, there will be a Fox segment about Islamburg trying to make some sort of connection. This is where they're training for the jihad. This is where they're training people to cut our throats. How do you know that? I was up there and on the far east perimeter, you can see buses, like uh, school buses and vehicles uh, that are riddled with bullet marks. You see weapons? I, I didn't actually see the weapons. The people have heard shots going off, exactly. weapons being used. This was a kind of a fox perennial that they brought out once, once a year for some occasion, some, some excuse. That changed in January of 2015 after the um, Charlie Hebdo shootings. Fox didn't just run one segment, they ran four separate segments with uh, four separate shows. We told you about the no-go zones, Muslim-controlled areas in and around Paris, but these micro-states, typically off-limits to non-Muslims, are not limited to France. They're spreading across the globe. Well, the U.S., nearly two dozen enclaves have popped up in nine states. Along to Joining us now is Ryan Nara. He's a security analyst at Clarion Project. He's been tracking There's actually a place Muslims there called Islamburg. They have a sign says, Welcome to Islamburg. It's about we a 60 meter large compound. We have them here in the United States, too. Know that. Nearly two dozen enclaves popping up across nine different states. And watch what happens when a stranger upstate New York. They have weapons. The Clarion Project did on Fox & Friends about how we had identified one of their jihadist enclaves. We're going to be carrying an M4, 500 rounds of ammunition, light armor piercing, a pistol with three extra magazines, and a machete. And if it gets down to the machete, we will cut them to shreds. It has to be this way. It has to be done. I guess you might call me a militant uh, minister or preacher. And I think that there is a religious war coming our way. It will be instigated by Muslims against all non-Muslim sects. And when it occurs, they will find evidence of our cruelty in the bullet-ridden, disfigured, and dismembered bodies of their brothers that we leave behind us.
This is our country, and we're never going to give it up to anyone. We will fight. There are 50 million patriots who are master gunners. Remember the Alamo. Ever. We are Americans. Three weeks ago, we should be on this side. When it comes to the narcissistic nitty nincompoop sitting over there being all sanctified. The president is guilty of treason. The president is a coward. The president is a liar. The president is a traitor. And we want him impeached. This fucking Muslim in charge needs to be cut the fuck Listen, down. Listen, my fellow Americans. Hang the line, Kenyan traitor, terrorist piece of shit. He's a traitor. Hang him. We will join together and overthrow this thing. And of course, with the Constitution, if right. necessary. Am I right? Yeah. He is a sort of natural leader, dresses well, bit of a dandy, dandified sort of southern gentleman look with his uh, red pocket square. It's not hard to see why he got almost 10,000 votes. President Duggar. Yes, Mr. Ted, how are you doing today? I originally designed the tactics for, for 10 men who are good gunners, who are not afraid to die, and who are patriots to this great nation. I will get you assistance if you need it. Um, and also, you know I own a military surplus store. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. No kidding. Okay. Oh, well, hey. Shane, this is Dr. Bob Daubert calling from Sigma Mountain, Tennessee. Mark, this is Dr. Robert Daubert calling from... Hey, Sigma Steve, Mountain. how you doing, man? Do you know who this is? Yeah, Tom, how you doing? Hello. Hi. Those guys yeah. have to be killed. Their buildings need to be burnt down, and if we can get in there and do that and get out with a, not losing a man... Even the better. Okay, how you doing? Good. Good. Pull, pull up that, that map again to all the Muslim. That camp right there. Mm -hmm. From a practical standpoint. It's easier to stick two or three guys in a utility vest, act like fix the water pipe, and paint the water source, because then that leads them wonder who did this. to do that, but there's always collateral damage. A Signal Mountain man has pleaded not guilty in a plot to kill Muslims. Doggart wrote on Facebook that the town must be destroyed and that he planned to inflict, quote, horrible numbers of casualties. He was apparently afraid the town's residents were planning a terrorist attack, even though local law enforcement say no such plan exists. Now he could face a $250,000 fine and up to five years in prison. I heard about his plans, Robert Darger's plans. I was on vacation visiting family in Virginia. I had gotten home and my parents told me that it was important that we attended a meeting because someone had attempted to harm us. I was scared because and curious as to why somebody would want to come here and hurt us. 
I didn't really know that someone would actually try to commit an act of terrorism on their, on their own country against their own people. I was traveling um, and I received a phone call from the FBI. They informed me that there was a plot, that an individual from a white militia group had been planning an attack. I'll never forget that phone call. It was a moment that, in the back of our heads, knew that possibly would take place one day. For many years, we were victims and targets and had received numerous threats. But to actually hear it from a federal agent was um, quite real. I'm good, how about yourself? Ah, I'm hearing a rumor we're supposed to get some snow or some kind of rain or something in the next couple of days. I know, I know. You're welcome, thanks for checking in. Bye-bye. You too. Living on a Slumberg serves as not only a sense of providing a solid community, but of providing protection in so many ways. And I feel very vulnerable not being there in this climate that we're in. When we found out that he was free, it was frightening. and the kid gloves with which he was handled became unbelievable. And that no media outlet knew about it, had been talking about it, was stunning. And we realized that we really didn't have a role to play as victims. We really had no voice. And if this man had had his way, there'd be a bloodbath in a Slumberg. And nobody was talking about it. So we thought about how we would empower ourselves, and we held a press conference. We wrote articles, we went on social media, and we made so much noise. Because we thought our neighbors, our friends, the American public has been done a disservice by not knowing what was happening. American Muslims, stop the rest. American Muslims. Robert Doggart has been on house arrest after he allegedly planned to attack a school and mosque in Islamburg, New York. But Muslim groups say it's a double standard that he's not in jail when a Muslim accused of planning an attack would be in prison. Robert Doggart, American Taliban. Robert Other threats Doggart. that Islamburg has faced are Bloggers giving out the address of the property and encouraging people to come see for themselves trespassing and the mailing of death threat letters. These attacks will not stop until citizens and the government stand up for that which is right. My message to Robert Doggart is that even if you and your friends try to come here, you can never stop us. We are always protected. I just can't barely even talk to you, even, even if you're not even here, because you tried to do so much horrible things. But just try again, you will be stopped. Your friends try, and you'll be stopped. That's all.
ีทีทีเยสเยสเพื่อเพื่อไม่ต้องไปคิดมากเดี๋ยวเราเล่าเรื่องเกี่ยวกับการเมืองเราเล่าเรื่องเกี่ยวกับการเมืองเราเล่าเรื่องเกี่ยวกับการเมืองเราเล่าเรื่องเกี่ย
And so what you have today is the conclusion of a week's worth of what is this community about and truth telling and it felt good. And I think what you saw as people came out smiling was finally we've been heard in a court of law because we've been tried in the court of opinion for years. We have uh, a thing called the 40 Hadiths and just like like 40 etiquettes. First one is um, what you want for your brother, what you want for yourself. It's just about being together, loving each other, loving your brother and sister, loving your enemy. It's just a very peaceful and beautiful religion. Open your hearts up to the truth. Don't let their lies bamboozle you. Right here, right now, we're living proof. We're all defined by what we do. We're all defined by what we do. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your head. Don't let peace slip through your head. Set aside our differences. Let us give love a chance. What we do will define Uh, Ryan, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. All right, and we know that uh, Donald Trump watches the show. So, Donald, it's more than ISIS, Mr. President-elect. Muslims of the Americas, they claim to have 22 of these enclaves. Of the